Hey, what's going on? We were just having a discussion how Leith hates my motorbike and that we weren't going to be working on my motorbike, right, to get it going. But that worked out well, didn't it, Leith? I don't need to shut you up. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you guys remember me buying this. Is that going to fall over? Take, take a bit of weight off it, show the other. No, I've got to get a screwdriver. Yeah. Right we're just, um, the belt was broken, guys, on this bike. Um, it's a, what is it? Hyasung? It's a Hyasung something or other, G, um, GV650. We might have to put a block of wood up underneath the back there. Nah, or... it's got a shock on the other side, man. That's just shocking. You might have to loosen the top. Oh, hello. See, that's looking better already, lowered, see? If I make a bracket that goes, brings that shock back to there and chop that guard, it's gonna be fully sick. Hi, Brendan. Just leave one shock off. Mm. Do I like Harleys? No, Leith does. Don't. <laughs> I'm not real fast, to be honest. I'm, um, can I lay that down again? I'm not really, so I can use my other hand. Alright, um, alright, I'm good, I just need to return that message, sort of, um, okay guys, um, I'll just turn my phone on to silent, otherwise we're going to get phone calls all morning, okay, um, okay, um, where are we at, what do we got, um, send it to the hovercraft, yep, the hovercraft's out here guys, we are going to play with that in a minute, but you caught us a bit sidetracked, it's there and the motor's in it and we're going to play with that in a minute right now um we're just halfway through doing this motorbike um owen how are you mate how are you hairy scary what's going on tony g'day mate um do i like harleys um i'm not real fussed to be honest on harleys or anything like that um is it going on yeah just get back that up the wheel comes forward a bit and it's fine okay i was yeah but um we keep going with this we do Hovercrafts we might, might do. What do you reckon, guys? We'll go do hovercrafts because you aren't really. Um, good morning, boys. How? Good week. Nice bike. Um, we'll stop no, playing. Not a nice bike. <laughs> we'll stop playing with the bike now. It was just, I was just, I never get over here, and it's part of the stuff that I want to sell to buy the Monaro. So I just thought I should get something done to it. Well, All right. We might start with the rally tee, okay? Because we had a little bit of progress on that this week. Um, so we'll fill you in on that. I know I haven't been putting many videos up, guys. I just haven't had time to edit and stuff like that. So we will um, still keep you in the loop and informed and show you what's going on. But yeah, I'm gonna, I wanna lower the back of this, bob that back guard, maybe get rid of that seat, change the handlebars and lower the front perhaps. Maybe twin headlights, something like that, I don't know. Different pipe setup for sure. And yeah, in other words, nothing will get done and I'll just cruise along. Um, okay, the body kit is gone from the ute. Okay, that got swapped for that manual wagon to old Matt or Brett. What's his name, Matt or Brett? I don't know, anyway. Um, yeah, so that's gone. So we can start now on putting it back together as a VN now that the VP stuff is all gone. Um, yeah, so we've got a bit of stuff going on, guys. Um, all good, mates. Just do what you have to do. That's cool, thanks man. We'll just, we'll just poke along. Um, Jono's up here at the moment um, to pick up the VN formula. He came up yesterday, picked him up from the airport. He's at my place now, he's not feeling the best. So he was gonna drive back this morning, but he's um, yeah, gonna hang around for another day. So he's at home now. Um, Mia would be driving him around the twist, but there you go. Um, put dirt tires on the bike. Yeah, I don't have time to, I'm so, I'd, I'd love to play games with it, but. We're just trying to raise money, really. Um, okay, everyone knows this beautiful specimen of Holden Engineering, okay? Um, now, the boys went through this week. We were gonna, okay, so with this Rally T, I don't know if you guys remember, it lost oil pressure when we went out. So it had oil pressure at idle, it was okay. As soon as the motor heated up or you got some revs and the oil pressure come up, it was um, drawing, Drawing crap up, at least just moving the ute if you're wondering what that is guys. Just far enough for us to get the um, hovercraft out. Okay, so Rally T, the, um, yeah, it was pulling crap. He put his hand in the sump, remember, on one of the lives and we pulled out a heap of rusty stuff. We thought the motor was gonna be fairly well rooted, but I'll get out of that light. Okay, 
Um, we thought the motor was going to be fairly well rooted, but when he pulled the sump off, he reckons it hasn't drawn enough through the pickup to score the bearings too bad for it to be an issue. So we're going to take a punt on pulling the sump off, cleaning all the crap out, blowing out the pickup, and putting it back in and running that still original 5 litre roller motor. So we've got this thing going again to go rallying. Okay. Um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. I think he's going to lift this motor up and stuff and show you what was wrong with it. Um, and he's just in the midst now. The sump's still sitting on this thing. Now, he's just, Lee's just moving cars around so we can get to the um, hovercraft. So there was a few comments of stuff. Why don't we just do an engine flush? An engine flush is not to get rid of metal and steel and rust particles. That is to get rid of sludge out of the engine. Um, and it won't fix a problem where it's picking up particles out of the sump and distributing them through the motor. And if you've got a motor that has particles in the oil and in the sump, you don't want to use a engine flush to get all that stuff loose and send it all through your motor because it will just destroy it. So it's a case of have to manually pull it out, clean it out, put it back together. There's no quick, easy fix for that. I hope all that made sense, dudes. All right, so. Um, put turbo tires on it, love your video, thanks dudes. All right, it is hot here again today, dudes, but we will persevere and do what we can. So, motorbike hopefully we're going today. We'll put that um, belt on it. There's Letho's wheelchair already, in case we don't have any luck with the hovercraft today. <laughs> here he is here on the forklift. Now, our biggest... Our biggest mission all right so there's number there's engine number one that was in it when we got it oh hang on here we go So just a question there um, from Jay, if, if I had too much oil in my car, would it cause it to leak out? Not necessarily, mate. It will leak out if the seals are shot. Like if you've got too much oil, because the oil normally sits around here, okay? If you've got too much oil and the front seal here or the rear main, uh, the, the front seal there. It or, depends where it's leaking from. Yeah, it, it depends where it's leaking from. It, it's not a good thing to have too much oil in your motor because if there's too much, it actually can work its way up the bores and smash the worst pistons. Thing about having too much oil in your engine is the crank is actually then swimming in the engine and just flicking it everywhere. And it'll restrict the movement of the crank and no, make it run it unbalanced. And, power, like yeah. It'll just, everything. But it's just unless it's full up to the rocket covers, it shouldn't necessarily leak out. You must have a seal somewhere that's gone to let that oil leak out, but we definitely don't recommend you... Um, yeah, or if the oil is up above, like, you know, is up past the sump seal and, like, the rear main seal and the front seal, if it, if it was about to leak, it will definitely leak if you do fill it up too much. Okay, so this is the sump, obviously, guys, off the rally tee. You have to go in a bit I'll get a rag. further so the light's better. Yeah, I don't think it's crack over there. Okay, so... All he's done to include you guys in it is unbolt that and then sit it back down. Okay, so in the bottom of your sump, guys, underneath in that sump, that's your pickup. Okay, so that, see how it's got a mesh thing? I don't know if you can see it up in there, but there's a little mesh thing which isn't actually um, covered in crap. Okay, there's so, your... Yeah, all right, so what's happening is when it's sitting there idling, all the crap that's in the sump is just basically sitting in the bottom, sort of that far away from it and everywhere in the sump. When you give it a rev and the oil starts sloshing around, all those little particles basically just mix with the oil and then they all just get sucked straight into the pickup and blocks the pickup. Then you let it sit there for a while at idle and then or turn it off, all the crap drops back, back down to the bottom and then it's got oil, oil pressure again. So that's why until we actually drove it and gave it a hard time, had no idea. But now I'll show you the crap. Oh, it needs a remain seal anyway, that's the other reason I took it out. 
because the whole bell housing was full of oil. Okay, so, someone just said then VR and VS pickups are, are bigger. There are different pickups. There's big flat ones. There's all sorts, depending on what sup you're running. Okay, so for guys that don't know, that's your crank in there. They're your rod caps. Okay, so you've got two bolts there. They're a main cap because they're the main ones that hold your crank in. That's the crank, and they're the main caps. And then you've got your con rods here, and they're your um, rod caps. And then your pistons are up in those holes there, guys, for the guys that don't understand. The reason they went to these pickups on the later VT motors is because there's less chance of cavitation. If you've got such a big surface area with the oil trying to suck up there, it can actually cavitate. So the smaller the hole, like as long as that's got as much surface area as the tube there, less chance of cavitation. So and when that, he says... And it picks the oil pressure up. When, when he's talking... Come in here a bit further so we can see properly. When he's talking about cavitation, guys, it's when the pump's working but it can't pick stuff up. It's like, and it's just, it's, there's a... It's just working harder than it should. But anyway, you can see all the rust inside the sump here. So there's heaps of rust there, heaps of rust in there. So basically all that has dropped into the bottom. And if I get a rag in here... Okay. See the dried up se secretions Look. of genital pus? Uh, that is all grit. 2002 Triple J. Yeah, so it's all grit, guys, and all that's just picking up and hitting onto that um, on the thing in the, the mesh part in the um, pickup and in the motor. Now, the thing is, like, that's... Obviously, it hasn't gone through the bearings or anything because the oil filter will also be full. I've, yes, it does go through the oil pump, but then it goes through the filter, so the filter will grab all that, so it hasn't destroyed the bearings at all. Like, you can just see... And, and none of that is metallic. Like, none of that is bearing material or metal from the engine. It's pretty much just all the rust and if you've got heaps of like, if you take your rock covers off or take the oil cap off and you can see that black gunge in there, that's oil deposits. If you run an oil, like a, um, yeah, run any sort of like oil detergent or something like that or a flush or anything like that, all that's going to do is break all that stuff up into little particles and make it sit in your sump. There's no way that anybody, anything's going to break that down enough to come out your sump. So... Yeah, so, yeah. So the only way, don't once you get in, to this point... Don't run engine flushes. Yeah, don't run engine flushes. By the time you get to this point and you've got that much sludge and crap in your oil, you've got to drop the sump, guys, and clean it out manually like this. There's the just... best way to prevent that is just do regular oil changes and never, like, mix synthetic and mineral oils. Hey, Mark, how are you, buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so does everyone understand that? Do you understand, like, where we're at and what we're doing? Now, if this engine, if this VTSS was, say, that ute over there we would be doing rebuilding the motor and doing it, but due to the fact this is just a rally car that's going to the paddock, and this engine here will end up going into one of the Dodge hot rods or going into something down the track and it'll be rebuilt then. For now, we're just gonna get it going and have some fun, you know? I'll just, and I'll just put the oil pressure gauge under anyway, so we yeah. know. But, yeah. but it won't have an issue after. The oil pressure gauge on it, so we know exactly what it's doing. So that'll be back together this week with any luck, depending on uh, yeah, Time. We, we need a rear main seal, we need a couple of engine mounts, and sump gasket's good because on them sump gasket's one piece rubber yeah. uh, thing, so that's... that's yeah. And good. you can see the rear main's been leaking because you can see how much oil's in the bell housing there. The throat bearing looks okay. Everything else looks alright in there, guys. The clutch, you know, clutch. the steering rack doesn't leak, which is rare on one of these. It's not actually a bad car, like there, those front rubbers there, if you're ever buying a Commodore, those um, Z mount, they're always rooted, but they're the original ones, um, rubber ones from Holden, so that's quite surprising that they're not shot. But yeah, does all that make sense, guys? Do you all understand that? Um, aren't those, aren't those hot, aren't those red and the caps, big dog, aren't yours hot red and the cap? I don't understand what that means. All right. Okay. Hey, Jason Mug, how are you, dude? What's going on, buddy? Okay, so yeah, so that's where we're at with the Rally T, guys. Um, what else would you guys like to know about? We, okay, so the ute's obviously pulled apart. We can start looking at panels and stuff for this. And because I've sold the formula, we can, um, am I hot? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sweating. Can you see I'm, I'm sweating? You can't see it. But anyway, yes. It's hot. It's probably 30 odd degrees or something here today, guys. But yeah, so we'll start um, going through the yard now and finding all the best parts we've got to put back onto this thing. Um, 
yeah, so it's going to start moving forward. And because the formula has been sold now, um, we've just got to work out. I've got bills to pay, but I've also got parts to buy. So that might be cam, and then Leith can start on the head work on this over Christmas or something. Converter, we've already got. I don't know. Things are moving forward, dudes. It's going to be good. It's going to be, it's going to be good. All right. Okay. Um, what are we on to next? I think we are now, we'll put this motor back in here so it's out of the way and we'll start on this um, hovercraft, guys. The main event, hey? Righto. Yep. Yep, clear. Yeah, alright. So that makes sense to everyone. Everyone knows what's going on now with Rally T. Um, we are going to have to. Um, 16 degrees in Geelong, eh? Your teeth is now 36 in Toowoomba. So we'd be around the same as you, Evan. We'd be around that 30 odd mark. Um, when the motor goes back in, I'm gonna order some adjustable coilovers for the front so we can bring the front up. Um, Chris, yes, on, the, on this ute, we are putting a, a dual plane air gap manifold on this one, but it's sort of 700 bucks, so it's a big hit of money. Um, and I had to buy tires for the truck this week, which sucks, but anyway. And we're going to chop these guards out. You can see where that line's been put there to make, give us a bit more clearance. So, yeah, and old um, Ben, dude, legend, thank you very much, mate, for the super chat. Thanks for the support, mate. It um, definitely makes it very worthwhile spending time talking cars and carrying on with you guys when you support like that. It's awesome. Okay, so speaking to a mate who's got a yard down in Brisbane, he has some Subaru parts for Nicole's car and a real estate donate this one to the cause this week um it goes so that might replace leaf's um leaf's rally car ute okay and the old captain's put his wheels onto his um rodeo so that's the first step on that one he's going to look for some um flares and stuff for it so it's all happening i just saw a big comment what was that um hadzi if you are here i'll just go for a quick walk through the yard and i've got a mate that's been wanting me to show him this Vitara for a while. So we'll go for a walk in the yard and show him that. Um, how often should VSX that's rarely driven be serviced? My dad has a VS, last service was in June. He wouldn't service it, bloody tight ass. He doesn't necessarily need to do a filter, just perhaps oil. Oil does go off when it just sits around. How's progress going on the Bedford? Um, is that an F truck? Yes, that's an F truck. It's been rolled over. It's an F250, so long chassis four wheel drive. Um, does have the gearbox in it. it, does have the tail shafts and stuff. There are a couple of nine inches in that with it, um, but it's fairly well parted out. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, Leaf, just down the front there, mate. You'll be able to help you out with parts. You wouldn't have any high electricity? Not really, no, but if you ask Leith, he may be able to... What, what do you actually... One of this model? Yeah. I'll... No, sorry. What, what are you actually chasing? Strap. No, I don't think so, sorry. No, yeah. no straps. No, I'm just live on YouTube, buddy. Oh, um, yeah, Leith's just down the sorry, front there. Sorry. You're all right, mate. Um, okay, we'll look for this Vitara, guys. Um, should he service his car? Yes, he should service his car. Oil does go off just sitting there. Um, you know, I think they say... Oh, of course... Even with it just sitting there, if he doesn't do a lot of cage, you probably should service it every six months, I suppose, just to change that oil out and filter, because it will just sit there and sludge up. There it is there. All right, Hadzi, are you on board this morning, mate? How am I even going to get in? Now you know why I haven't sent you the photos, Hadzi, because I can't even get into it. All right, here we go. Bit of a mission, eh, guys? Whoa, there's a nice Volkswagen for someone. Anyone need a mad drift car? That had a 1UZ in it, it's not in it anymore, guys. All right, Hadzi, so here it is, buddy. Matara, missing front end bits, hub off the other side, doors, diff's in it, mate, that's in it. The diff is still in it. It's got yellow shocks, which is just fabulous. It does have a tow bar, if that is of any interest to you. Is that bonnet rooted? Can I stand on it? Okay, inside is average at best. It is manual. It's got some eBay stopwatch in it. Must be a race car. It's got a roof console, but look at that. Craziness. Smashed windows. 
What a gem. Oh, just got caught on the aerial and almost fucking busted my puffle valve. Um, give the bloke at the gate an autograph. He wasn't that interested in me, mate. Oh, okay, it does have a motor in it. I don't know if you can see that, Hadzi. But yeah, so carbide motor. All right, so hopefully that makes you happy, dude. And yeah, we'll go from there. Um, I don't think there's anything else hidden away of interest. Had a guy in this morning to buy a BMW, which is just in here somewhere, guys. Where is it? There's an old BMW in here somewhere. Leith's up there trying to start the hovercraft. I can't find the BMW. It's in here somewhere. Starter motor's giving him grief. I can hear it from here. All right. Oh, look at that, dudes. Look at that spoiler. That come in this week, this Pulsar. No, it's a laser. What do you reckon? Put that on, I don't know. Put it on my motorbike. Uh, all right, let's go. The old Gemini's still here if anyone wants it. I haven't advertised it, but yeah. If anyone's looking for a mad Gemini. If I ever build a drift car, this one will be it. If I ever get there. If I ever have five minutes, there's a VB can. I think that's the hovercraft we can hear now, guys. It's not hovering yet, but it's crafting. Um, can you do an EL EF Falcon? Um, thanks, mate. Um, can I do an EL EF Falcon? Um, when? is the question like I've got a lot of builds that I really really want to do and I'm really excited about doing to add another one into the mix but I do have a nice AU here this thing's mint if anyone wants a nice Falcon we've just got to clean it this week was that a hovercraft I heard yeah we... yep. okay so because the hovercraft's gonna make a lot of mess dudes we're gonna wet the ground um, what are we putting in the bin? Aren't you worried about snakes? Snakes. I'm more worried about trails of snakes than I am about proper snakes, honestly. Not really. It's just, with what I do, it's just one of those things. Um, keep saying service is waste, um, he doesn't waste money. Just a cheap oil. If he doesn't use it all the time, just use a cheap oil and yeah. But it, it's his car, man. You can't force him to do what he doesn't want to do. You know, like, you just, he'll do what he wants. Um, I've got that AU XR8 down the front here that we will be doing. Um, I yeah, it's just yeah. the the time and uh, the time and money it takes to do a car. Like, and when you say doing ELF EF Falcon, like to be honest, in my head, I've never thought about one. I don't have a plan in my mind on what you'd even do to an EL EF Falcon. They're not, you know, like a lot of these cars that I do build. Yeah, they're all in the scrap pile. It's not. So, I don't want to be rude about them, but I understand some people are interested in them. But it's not something that I think about or want to build. You know what I mean? Whereas, Set that works for us, he loves them. Set, we've got a bloke that works for us that loves them. He drives an EL or an EF. But like this Ute is something I've been thinking about for a long time to build. The Forester is something that I'm actually excited about building. Whereas, yeah, I'm not even responding to those stupid comments. Um, G'day, Clinton. How are you, buddy? You want an update, buddy, on what's going on? Okay, so we started out, the, the utes obviously started to be pulled apart to get its VN bits. Um, the belt turned up. The belt for this thing was like $400, $500, but I ended up getting a second hand one off Facebook for 60 bucks. So we just started putting the belt on that. We'll play with this once we're finished today. We have had a chat about um, the Rally T. Um, Leith was showing the crap that's in the sump, okay? So we pulled the sump off that before. We're gonna to have to put a rear main in it because you can see how much oil is in the bell housing from where it's been leaking. So this will be back up, back running again this week with any luck. We're gonna do some coilovers and some chopping. Um, we just went out in the yard. Do you still have the van auto? Well, I don't even know what that means, but anyway. Um, the Bedford van, um, it's hard not to get excited about something to get moving on it. Don't know what that. Um, 
I'll talk about the SV89 in a second. I was going to talk to you about that today. Um, I'm going to get the front end back in this very soon. This is part of the stuff that I want to sell to um, buy the Monaro that's coming up. Okay, now the SV89. Um, I had a call from Frank. Thank you very much for the call. We had a bit of a chat yesterday. Um, he's quite excited about the HSV stuff and the Commodore stuff and especially the SV89. Now, the SV89, when I got it, as you, as you guys know, was in sort of the rainforest in North Queensland, okay? As far as I can tell, the whole thing has been underwater and it's very rusty in weird spots too. So it's sitting in my yard at home where we don't have humidity here, we get bugger all rain and it's dry, okay? I want to sort of watch and see what rust is going to progress and what's not. So then I don't want to do a build on that today and in six months time have rust coming back through. So mid to the end of next year, that car will get started on. Once we can see what's going to happen with it, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just hard when it is so rusty. I've never come across one that's so rusty. Most cars that are that rusty go in the scrap pile. It's not something you would repair. But as the same as you guys, I'm very passionate about that car and restoring it back to what it needs to be. So it's... um. It is going to happen. We're just, it's just a process, guys, that you've got to go through. Um, but anyway, it, it, it'll happen. It's just, yeah, this thing here will be done first, though. I love this thing. It's bloody awesome. It's just a beast. At least it's going to hose me down. Yeah, we need some more gravel, so he's just watering it to get it to grow. Yeah. That's a good idea, dude. You come up with all the good ideas. Um, strip it down and sandblast it first. Sandblasting necessarily isn't the way to go because sandblasting just fills up the rest of the car with crap. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's not my first rodeo. It's not the first car I've ever restored, but it needs to be one that's done properly and not just half-assed. Okay, it's not a clean-up or a tidy-up. It is a full mission, okay, and it's a full 100% perfect yeah. His phone's going. Okay, my AC died. Thought to use SV89 style AC. Yeah, it's the go. It actually made a big difference, eh? Hey? And you know the worst thing about it? So I drove that thing all the way back with no electrics, no windows, no nothing. Turned up in, the, pulled in my driveway, and the fan was on the whole time, but just not working. As soon as I pulled in the driveway, went up the little bump, come through the gate, and poof, the fan started working. I couldn't bloody believe it. It is a beautiful car though, like it is just awesome, like it's, um, yeah, I love it. It's got, it, yeah, it's a forever car, but I'm sidetracked onto the Monaro at the moment. The Monaro come about because Leaf and I, hang on. Leaf and I went to do, um, to pick up his Rodeo the other day, and I really wanted to take the, um, the SS50, my ute. But because Mia is with me all the time, I needed the extra seats and she couldn't come. So the next best thing to that SS50 is a Monaro. So that's why I'm going to get a Monaro, really just for Mia. So, but she's my best mate, so she's worthwhile. Um, it needs big dollars. It does need big dollars spent on it, but that's fine. We can, um, we can sell something else to fund that project. It's, it's all in the midst. It's all happening, guys. And the kids have got to eat along the way. Is that someone that wanted me, was it? Fernvale to Laidley. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Anyway, if, if you're the person who just rang to get a tow from... Oh. Yeah, but... Yeah, anyway. For me to drive to Brisbane to do a local tow, it seems bloody expensive. But anyway. Hi, bud. A big hi from China. Dude, Benjamin, China, right? Eh? And what are you... Are you the boat doing the... Um, teaching English. Teaching English in China? Or are you another guy? Um... I picked up my new VHVE Retro the other day. Oh, sweet. One of those blue ones with the big wheels. Um, it was a good adventure from up near Mackay. That's the go. Yep, teaching. Cool, man. Awesome. How long are you over in China for, dude? Do you have many hovercrafts in China? Because we've got way too many here. Leith reckons he doesn't like it, but he really does love it. Okay. The issue we're going to have, guys, is a lot of the air leaks out this fiberglass bit here that's broken. So we're just going to put a board along here and clamp that up to try and get it to happen. But Leith rings me yesterday, right? 
rings me yesterday and goes, oh, dude, I got it started. It runs good. I'll leave it alone now and we'll deal with it. I've got other stuff to do. We'll deal with it on the live stream. I said, yep, sweet. Sounds good, man. Ten minutes later, I get a phone call. He goes, oh, I've put the belt on. So, which is um, this, this belt here, okay, which runs the fan. He goes, oh, and I started it up, man, and the thing started to take off. Like oh, it I just. To, I had to rev it to get oh, it to move. He revved it, and he goes, the thing tried to take off off the trailer. So. No, tried to push the trailer along. Oh, it's not going to take off off the trailer. Look at the air underneath. It's not going to try and lift. But take off forward. It was just trying to push the trailer along. See, he doesn't listen. It doesn't matter what I tell him, he doesn't listen. <laughs> All right. Let's um see what's going to go on. Yeah, so we, we have got an issue here, guys, with the fiberglassing, which I knew when I bought it, but we will um, deal with that once it's going and seems to work. So he's gone through, and all the steering now is working. Like, it's all hooked up and works. The throttle is now working off the front. Did you end up getting... Do you have to hook power to the coil still, or you've got all the ignition working? Okay, he's... Oh, yeah, he's got ignition switches here now. You got water in it this time? Yeah. Yeah, no milkshakes? Oh. I'm just going to try and get the fucking off now. Hmm. Alright. Okay. So, that's our next step, is get it off. We'll just drag it out here a bit. Maybe we can just tilt it up and it'll slide off the back. Yep. Alright. I'm going to set you guys up just here. Okay. You guys should be alright by yourself for a minute. No, that's not going to work. Um, where? My kids were supposed to come and help today, but they didn't. Oh. It is, isn't it? All right. It's a crafty little bugger. So in theory, if we tip that up, if I lift the end of that, that should just fall off, yeah? You hold that, I'll lift it up. Safety glass. I could just do the I could just do the forklift man. I'll yeah. just lift it with the forklift. Oh, and do I don't know, we'll work something out. Alright, All right, so what do we got? Um actually we should take oh, TV watering down done nothing. All right, we're just starting it in the dirt. You reckon they'd help, do you? No traffic jams, put a 304 in the hovercraft and be mad. The problem is it won't lift up. I'll just um yeah I'll chop the back wheels and hook the other forklift up to it and drag it off. I don't know if I want to put any weight pressure pulling anything on the back of that I'll rip the thing in half. You know you want to do pulling. Uh, I'll find a wheel perhaps. The dude with the big choco name. The trouble is it's a boat trailer guys not a hovercraft trailer so we don't know how we're going to get it off. Alright. been watching the strongman contest yeah I wasn't strong enough no um, okay the um, okay someone said put put a put a 304 in it it's not really too much weight yeah. hell no, man. not a hope in hell all right um, might just have to try and forklift through here man you can get the forklift forks in through here um, I just don't know how we're going to get it off. That'll just rip out. Could you put the forks the all the way through? The back. All the way. Actually, because that'll support the motor and it'll yeah, be fine. Be to get the of I'll, I'll drop this down so it's level. Yeah. All right, we're going to drop it down so it's level, guys, and see. Who would have thought that the hardest part of today was getting this off the trailer? Yeah. 
This thing has to run, does it? Oh, there we go. Normally we have to pick up shirts for you, shirt lifter. All right, come in. Do you want, we might have to push them in a bit. I'm gonna have to push these in a bit. Yeah, man. We will be hovercrafting today. Got a pole there, or something. What do we got? Um, What's the plan with the hovercraft? Drive it, uh, use the tow truck. It's not really, bit with the beaver tail and there's nowhere to hook to the back of it. See, this here is pretty flimsy and there's nowhere to hook to it. So we've got to lift it up to get it off. We can't just drag it off. It's um, one of those things. How's things? Things will be better once we get this off. Um, how old are the forklifts? Just old enough. Um, put some slings under the forklift. Yeah, I did, um, I've got some big slings. I was supposed to bring them in this morning um, and I had my day planned when I woke up. Jono, the subscriber that puts up those big super chats, come to buy the formula and he's actually at my house now. He woke up um, a bit crook and under the weather and it sort of threw my whole day out and the plan I had, so I wasn't really thinking when I left home, which has just made our life harder now. But anyway, we'll get there, guys. Just, just all part of the... And for the person that want to hang and shit on how old my forklifts are, I'm happy for you to buy any forklift for us. If you don't like these old ones, feel free to um, buy one and give it to me. I'm be we'll accept a new forklift off him, won't we, Leaf? We'll accept a new forklift off the guy that's worried about how old our forklift is. Well, what's your forklift like, mate? Yeah, what? How? What year is yours? Or does your work pay for yours? Yeah, because I have to pay for everything here. Trust me, sucks to be sucks to be me. We just fixed the hydraulic rams on that one, which is just fabulous. But anyway, three seals, 125 bucks. Couldn't believe it. Hang on. Ah, they're hot. Ah, they're hot. Okay, go. Hang on. Keep going. Yeah. Can't see anything, so hang on, stop. Obviously, because it's the... It can't go further because of the, um, there's blocks there. No, it's supported on some blocks just there. So. There's actually, yeah, I might have to chalk the back up like that. Yeah, if I put some chocks under here, stay there. If I put some chocks under the back there, then we'll be able to get through further. Uh, Maybe if I hook it, if I hook a strap from there around this piece and around that steel pole, and then we'll drag it backwards, and then it'll tip up and hopefully come off. To find something to chop it. Just so stop there before you poke them through the floor. All right, let's find some wheels, guys. The joys of doing stuff that you're not organised to do. Um, Forklifts, at least they do the job. Yeah, they, they work perfectly. Like, there's no, there's no need for some bloody flash sign. Same as my trucks. Like, you know, I could go and buy big shiny wheel trucks, but what's the point? They still do the same job. That's the thing. Like, if we, if I buy a new forklift for twenty grand, then I've got to. Um, yeah. Hang on, I'll just put this in front of the wheel.
Okay. The trouble is how we're going to get it back on the forklift. All right. Back on the trailer, sorry. Yep, beautiful. Look at that, and you guys didn't think we were gonna get that off, did ya? See you later, Ben, thanks for joining in, dude. Hopefully we'll have this thing cracking soon, buddy. It? Yeah, man. Sling it like a boat. Yes, I was gonna sling it like a boat, but I didn't bring the slings in, I'm sorry. Might just have to. Tires for chocks. I want to make it into a land speeder like our Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you dress up as that woogie dude. The woogie? Yeah, yeah. Chewbacca, yeah. Yeah, you can be Chewbacca. Leaf's going to dress up as Princess Leia with his hair and that done. To make his own Star Wars land speed thing. Oh, it needs something to sit on, that's hot. <laughs> right. I'll get something, hang on. Don't go quiet. Is that what you say to all the guys? Is that what you say to all the guys? That runs mint. We're just gonna lock these holes up now, guys, so that it'll hover and craft. That's actually quite nice to stand there on a hot day. Look at that. I'll just get rid of my drink, hang on. Just getting rid of my drink, guys. How means that? You can see it both sides coming out there, so... Yeah, I can see it. Okay, I can feel, I can feel it there and there. You can see the dirt. Okay. Yeah, both sides. All right, so we're just going to plug up some holes now, guys. Um, no, not until we plug up no, a lot of I holes. Still don't think it is, like you're going to lift it yeah. yeah. When when we first, Jesus, it's hot out here. Um, okay. Now that it's alive and it looks like it's pumping air and stuff, we're going to find some clamps, guys, and some bits of timber and run them along the side, which we've got ones here that we prepared earlier. These pieces here, we'll run these down each side with G-clamps to sandwich, sandwich the sides together to stop the air from coming out. From there, if you remember, there was a guy in Kingaroy, next town across, that built these for 20 years and he said that we're going to have trouble with the skirt design um, and he has the proper design of what to make to make the whole craft work. So we're still going to have a bash today to try and get this thing to go. But um, we may end up having to. That's how hot it is here, guys. Look at that. Leaf hosed that down and it's dry already. But yeah, you got enough clamps? I'll bring the timbers. We'll give it a good bash, guys, and see what we can do. Oh. All right. Has anyone else on here ever driven a hovercraft? Because I never have. Hovercraft, anyone? Hovercraft? Ugh. All right. Um, tape and zip ties, pretty much, mate. Um, it just seemed like you were being smart about the forklift, buddy. Um, I'm well aware that I don't have brand new stuff. I'm well aware what I can and can't afford. And yeah, it's, it is what it is, buddy. You do the best you can to do what you can. I've got a lot of people in my life that I help and support. And if it means I don't have a brand new forklift so everyone else can be happy and live, I'm quite happy. Do we need one underneath as well or? 
it is what it is. If it breaks, I've just got to repair it. Like, it's not, you know. Um, finally cooled off in Sydney. No, I haven't driven a hovercraft, but would love to. Same, it'd be good. Um, Integra, it's all good, buddy. Don't worry about it. We're, we're golden, buddy. It's not a major stress, dude. Zip ties, it's alive, yeah. Free air conditioning, it is. It's actually quite good there. Um, all right. So you guys understand what we're trying to achieve there? Because over the years, the fiberglass thing has split and all the air, okay, see in there, there's holes. So half of the air or three quarters of the air goes backwards to drive it and a quarter of it goes through there into those holes and then it fills up all these side bits, yeah. right? A hovercraft of this size only needs about three PSI, or two to three PSI of pressure underneath to lift it. So. Obviously, Letho's been doing his... Um... No, I watched Guy Martin the other night and he did the world uh, speed record for a hovercraft. So they had a, uh, like a 1200cc road bike engine at the rear and a lift motor at the front, which is out of a World War II stuff. Oh no, it was a war drone or some shit, I don't know. Okay, there was just a question about the diner. The diner giveaway will still happen, guys. It's here. Um, it's not going anywhere. It definitely will get given away. It's just a case of um, we get sidetracked and got stuff to do, you know, like, so it will happen. Um, yeah, we definitely want to give it away. We definitely want to drive it somewhere to give it to someone. Um, so, yeah, it's just a case of it'll happen when it happens. Everything happens eventually, doesn't it, Captain? Not really? No? Oh. But yeah, it'll happen. It's just not high on the agenda. Monaro's are. Um, watch guy not Top Gear for hovercrafts. Okay, there's hovercrafts oh, on. Oh yeah, the one on Top Gear. Yeah, but that yeah. was a transit van that they put a, a V8 Aerial Atom engine in it and something else, and that was just ridiculous. Full drive Tirana is happening at Christmas time. It's always been happening at Christmas time. Basically, over Christmas, I end up with a few days where work's a little bit quiet, and I like to do something for myself. And that's what's happening over Christmas. I like to have that. Thank you very much for the support, um, Scott T. Welcome, mate, and I hope you do enjoy it. Um, the captain looks like he's loving the hovercraft. He does. No, he loves it. Stop, he, stop saying that. He doesn't want to admit it. I don't want it. I don't like it. I know I'm going to crash it. So. <laughs> Not as bad as old Jake. How's your leg, mate? Broken in two pieces or something? My mate Jake crashed his car. So my wife, Nicole, told me that when his leg's better, that I have to take him down to a driving school in Brisbane and get him to learn how to do defensive driving because she doesn't want him to die. go see old mate and build some skirts. is skirts so I'll get some trestles we'll sit it on trestles and I'll have to get a skirts made up what do you reckon yeah yeah I'll go to Bunnings and get some trestles so we can sit them up over here and put it up on some trestles and go from there <laughs> wow 
bloody hot here today, guys. Yeah, that's so good. Stand there. <laughs> what? He's going to get me with rocks. I can see it now. Good tune up. All right, let's get out of the sun and um, think about a plan. Well, that was sort of successful, but not. Oh, I'm happy, man. It runs, it does that. We just got to get it up on trestles. Now, old mate did say, the hovercraft guy, the guy that contacted me that knows about hovercrafts, he did say, he goes, dude, you're going to have trouble with that, um, those bloody curtains around the side. He said, you're going to struggle to make it to work. And he was right. So. Yeah, Lifting up just at idle because if you back off the throttle under a certain RPM, the thing just hits the ground. Yeah. It's got to lift pretty easily, really. So. Well, there's your brakes. You're worried about brakes. So. Well, yeah. I'm going to go and see him today, guys. The guy that the hovercraft king that we'll call him from now on the hovercraft king, and um, and Leith will be the hovercraft queen. Yeah. And I'll be the princess. He'll be. I'll be Seaman Stone. He can be Master Beta. They are boating names. Knows how to swallow this boy. He'll just be a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's lead you through some of these. Um, all right, um, how's the XR8 coming along? Red still doing it. The XR8 is in the front yard. The seats and stuff for it are right here in this pile. That's all the leather and the gear stuff and all that sort of thing. The next step for that thing is the dash. But um, Le leading up to Christmas, guys, you've probably noticed there hasn't been a lot of videos. That's simply because there's a quiet period through Christmas. I need to raise as much money as I can coming up to Christmas so I can relax. Next big job that you guys will see will be the Tirana build. In the meantime, like obviously the Rally T will get done and we'll do a bit of hovercraft, but yeah. Anyway, hang in there with us and there'll be all sorts of stuff going on. Okay, so um, Captain loves anything with a motor, pretty much. Um, it is hot. Um, put it back on the trailer and drive it around. <laughs> That'll work, eh? Um, yeah, we can put a steering wheel on the jockey wheel. We're acting good. What's the bull bar in the background? What's that bull bar off that's sitting on the ground over there, Lee? Where? The one outside. Yeah. Control, it, no, it, the controller back here. Oh, okay. That's. What, do you need a bull bar for? what? What do you actually need a bull bar for? We do have. There's a oh, pile of them here. Too. That bull bar is it's off. Really, really nice high lush one out the front there. Two thousand seven on. There's a, that's for that patrol there. I don't know if you can see it. That bull bar's for that patrol. It's a winch bar to go back on this thing. Um, at least you said there's a late model Hilux one there. There's all sorts of bars. Just, just a case of down in below in the description, there's the towing number, which you'll get me, and there's the parts number that you'll get Lee. If you send him a message, you'll give him a call and tell him what you're actually looking for. If we've got it, we're all good. And we have found too now that there is a freight company just up the road here that will take larger packages, which has been a major struggle for us for a long time. And um, yeah, well, there's a video I can do too because I've got one coming up. See that there? That's a clothes steamer from Singer, okay? And that's what you use to get tint off your windows. So I'd like to do a video on that. Yeah, so... yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I, Red loves anything with good interior. I do, interior, I love good interior. This thing here, this Jag, my daughter and I have been um, doing the black leather in this thing. Well, we started to do it and then I haven't touched it since. You can tell by the dirt, but it's mint now. Like, look how good that leather is in that. We've done all the carpet and stuff. It's got good wood grain. That door trim over there is done. So this thing's going to be awesome. It's a build a better barrow, guys. Mr. Jack, legend, thank you very much for the support, dude. We're going to need money to um, fix our hovercraft now. Uh, my question, okay, Holden HQ, dude. Okay, my question is, how the hell can you afford Rego for... All your cars, mate. Well, I can't. Um, I register one at a time. So at the moment, the formula is registered. Um, that's going to go well today, tomorrow. Okay. So I'll probably reg register my um, SS50 Ute because that I'll get to fix some stuff on that and register that. So I've got that to use. And then by the time that runs out, I'll have the new Monaro and that'll be registered. Um, 
I don't have that many regos. My wife has a car and I have the truck and that's sort of what we do. So yeah, Captain's into the motorbike that he doesn't want to touch. Um, no, I want to get it going, so then you shut up about it. <laughs> yeah, so re rego, rego, mate, is an ongoing issue. It is very hard. Um, I am going to and thinking of starting a car club so that a lot of this stuff can go on club rego because I don't actually use them that often, but it's nice to be able to use them when I do. Um, Cap Captain and Tennille, I thought, was... I don't understand what that is, but anyway. Um, Benjamin, um, bye for now, Red and Captain. Be good, stay positive, soldier on with Codrill. Not a problem, dude. See ya, buddy. Thanks for joining in. Um, I was a bit late, a little live. I have to re-watch what happened um, with the craft. Well, nothing exciting. Nothing exciting. It, um, it ran mint, but it just didn't hover or craft. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, we do have a trade plate for test driving cars and stuff like that. And you can buy them and use it when you purchase them and stuff, but they're not just for, you can't use it for just driving around. So um, it makes it hard. You've got to sort of follow those trade plate rules. Um, it makes it hard. A lot of the times we are just test driving stuff though. So, but yeah, but it does make it easier to, yeah. Trade plate does work, but the club rego thing will be better if I form my own club. So then I don't have to go to all meetings and put up with, yeah, weirdos. But anyway. Not that all clubs are weirdos, but just I don't have time to go to meetings and stuff like that. Why not the VNSS? Then there's more room for people. Um, the paint on the VNSS is mint. If I park it in the car park, someone's going to open the door on it and it's going to piss me off. Um, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things. I, if someone offered me the right money today, I'd probably sell it to buy the Monaro and use the Monaro. But... It's one of those things that I care about too much, if that makes sense. It's just, um, yeah. Um, your car has to be 30 years old for Club Rego in Queensland. Yes, I'm aware of that. Add up the years, dude. 98% of my cars are over 30 years old. Um, yeah. Except for the ones that aren't. Except, they've said, except for the ones that aren't. Um, 197 Holden HDGDS. You need to be more positive in life, dude. You need to roll with the punches more and you need to be more positive. You need to stop looking at the negatives of everything and you need to start going, yes, I can do it. Yes, it'll be fine. Let's give it a go. Instead of, can't do this, can't do that, can't do that. You need, and everyone needs to do that. Every, but if you can't do it, then you do something else. But you at least give it a go and don't just be negative before you even start. You know, like it's, yeah, you don't, achieve things or get anywhere without giving it a bash and at least trying and to be honest half the fun is trying it's not even once the car's registered i'm just going to get into trouble so yeah but anyway um how much do i want for the ss i don't really want to sell it <laughs> i don't know it'd be 25 ish or something like that i need enough to buy the monaro and paint it and then i'd be willing to sell it but yeah um g'day red captain from melbourne g'day hillary how are you um VNS is too nice. Um, no worries, dude. But yeah, just give it a try. Life will be bright and sunny and probably too hot like it is today. But anyway, um, and it is hard sometimes to let go of things not going well because we do have times in our life where things just don't go really, really well and it's hard to get down, but you just got to keep going. Nah, it'll be right. And when that doesn't work, put it aside, move on to the next one. And then that's going to work and then go back to that and just, just keep on moving forward. And can do is what you want to do. That rhymed and I didn't know it. I was a poet and I didn't know it. Um, it's better to fail than never have a go. That's it. It's like the hovercraft today, dude. It's like, yes, the bloody thing didn't lift up and didn't move for us, but the motor in it's good now. The fan works, right? I was always aware that the fiberglass thing was going to be crap. And when old mate told me that the, the bags were going to be no good, I didn't want to believe him, but I still didn't want that to stop me from moving forward and giving it a go. So now... We just, we'll move on to the next job, obviously, but put this up on stands and it's going to be 10 times the hovercraft with that bag done now. So you can't get to let it, let it get you down. The same as we put that motor in and then straight away, pff, didn't work. But you just got to go, oh, well, all good. Move on to the next one. You just got to, yeah. All right. Um, what Monaro am I getting? Uh, it's just a... Um, just a CV8 2002 one, just um, LS, I'm going to get an auto this time. Um, yeah, just something I sort of need and want. 
Um, need. Put it up on the times. Need, yeah. I don't need it, but yeah. Um, Well, if I, Jay, if I do sell my Monaro, my SS, that's the only reason that I would be prepared to sell my VNSS is because I do have other ones in the yard that I can then start a build on and build them. So if I didn't have the other one in my yard, I wouldn't even really consider selling it. But if I can sell my one, I enjoy building them and that more than, you know, they just sit in the yard. I've got to put a heap of sheds up this year and yeah, but. Do you want a drink, Leith? Um, all right. G'day, Angelo. How are you, dude? Um, yep, all right. What do you want, just lift it up? No, we're probably going to have to lift the back of it. Okay, yep. If you can, I don't know if you can. All right, we'll be doing jumps in no time. If I put those motocross bars on, does that make this a motocross bike? Yeah. Um, that Bedford van looks sexier than ever. How much for the van? I offered it to a guy the other day for eight, but today, because I need money, six. It's, um, I'll bolt the front end back in. It's got a 202 and Trimatic. Uh, extractors and that. It's not something I went and bought, guys. It's something I, I, I swapped for another car. Yeah, so this thing's pretty good. Like, the gutters have all been done because anyone that knows these vans just rust out real bad in the gutters. Um, yeah, it's not rusty. It's good in the doors. It's got Volvo seats, but I've got these Rodeo ones to put in it because they're sort of bolstered in quite a nice seat. But, yeah, I don't know. If someone wants a Bedford van, it's pretty good. Long wheelbase. Got a 10 bolt, 12 bolt Pontiac diff in the back. Yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Dash is terrible, but yeah. It's not rusty, which is where the money's at. Yeah. Stay off the rock stars. Yes, I agree. Um, where's me mate Mia? I got told that Mia wasn't allowed to come with me today because she is tired and we had a massive day this week. She'd come with me. We end up home at like nine o'clock and she's just buggered, so she's at home. Um, doing her thing, which is cool. Um, I've got to go back there. Jono, one of our subscribers, is at my place now. He come up to, flew up to get the formula, picked him up from the airport yesterday. We've done a few toes and stuff. And he woke up this morning feeling crook, so he's not really up to the drive back. I did offer him that I'd drive him back to Sydney tonight and I'd fly back. So um, um, now Leith's a hoon biker. You better watch out, Leith, you're in Queensland. Yeah, so I may end up driving to Sydney tonight, guys. I'm not sure. I'll see what John A wants to do. But, um, yeah. But I had to be here for you guys this morning, so I couldn't drive him back this morning. And, yeah. So what are you thinking, Al Capitanio? I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Stick a fork in you? Mm-hmm. Mm. That turd goes. That turd sort of goes. That's a day. Yeah, I'll get some stands from... Um, I'll get some stands from Bunnings. Yeah, no, they'll fall off them. I want to get the... There's other ones with... Um, there's heavier ones. We'll need them anyway for down the track. We're doing chassis and stuff, so we'll do them. If anyone wants a VN Commodore, how much is this one, Leith, you reckon? Eight? No. 
Five, six, six. Got a VN Commodore, guys. Six hundred bucks. It looks terrible, but it's not rusty. All right, so it's just uh, the taco's got to come out. We've got to use that for something. But um, other than that, it all goes. There's a tap underneath the driver's seat to turn off the rear brakes to skid it. It's just a six-cylinder auto, just on stockos. Um, yeah, if anyone wants a VN that goes and drives. What else we got you can buy? Probably going to sell a HR. Does anyone want a HR Holden? Might, this might drop out. Um, if you're going to Sydney, um, this guy is selling a VNBT1 for free. I'll send you some photos. Facebook if you, for free. Okay, I'll drive that back. Does it run? What do I need to take with me? I've got this HR, guys. If anyone wants a HR, this thing's got a 202 and a 4-speed in it. I have had it running. It's not rusted out, but it does have rust. The, re the worst part about this car, and the reason it is so cheap, is that rear quarter there. Okay, I've got a quarter cut there for it to repair that. Uh, it's got alloys and that on it. Three and a half grand, six cylinder, four speed. It's ratty, but it's not wrecked and it's all there. Okay, so if anyone wants a HR, let me know. Yeah. So, do you like my Dodge? I do. Yeah. All right. There are some other HRs and stuff around, all around the same sort of money if someone wants one. Might even have a HD sedan as well. I do have a ute that all the rust has been done in it. That can go. Yeah, just need a Monaro, guys. There's a um, there's a Cortina right there. That can go. I don't care. Just need money. How much for the patrol? Um, 710. 07. 07. So as it sits, how much? Well, uh, as it sits, yeah, probably eight. Okay. That's an 07, 07 turbo diesel manual, um, as it sits, 8, with the panel stuff there fixed and a couple of flares, it'll be 10. So if anyone wants a good late model patrol, there you go, that'll be ready in the next week or so. And that'll go towards the Monaro. Um, how much for the hardtop Valiant? Um, 3.4 million dollars. If you come up with 3.4 million dollars, no less. You can have the valve. Other than that, it's not for sale. Yeah, no, Does that sound about right, Leaf? Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. We um, have an ugly VH Valiant sitting next to it. We do have the um we do have a sedan here that's more reasonably priced, like in the realm of sanity. As this thing sits, what what are you at this now? It's about six. Five as is. Five as is. This thing here is not rusty and it's pretty well complete except for front seats and front door trims. Motors in it, new extractors, carby's been done, radiators in, tail shafts in it. Pretty much is a running driving thing bar brake booster, but I think we found one. Okay, so as it sits, five grand. As we continue to work on it, obviously the price goes up. It'll end up, I don't know if you guys remember my blue HR, how that just had the original paint cleaned up and it just sitting nice and low i've got some wheels there yeah, i've got, standard, got um, wheels to go on the rear and we've got a staggered set of valiant wheels to go on it which look like you know this them okay so i've got a widened set of them they'll go on it with maybe some white walls that or something that is the white one okay um i'm getting a cv8 monaro michael um i had one years ago and um yeah just want to replace it and get another one just it's time um could you show me the other hrs looking at one for a straight one with good quarters um if you're serious about the hrs and not just looking for pictures and wasting my time um send me a message and i can run through what i've got some of the stuff's not here because a lot of the stuff that's mine i don't keep here because leaf gets sick of people coming in going is that for sale and him having to say no it's the bosses he doesn't want to sell it and then they harass him so it's easier for me to have my stuff at home but anyway if you are serious about a hr there are other ones there um all of them need work if you're looking for a turnkey one for three grand that's mint and ready to go ask for pictures off someone else because they don't exist everything i've got is a project but yeah there are ones that aren't rusty and i have everything there to put them together okay cool man sounds good buddy thank you very much rake i look forward to hearing from you and we'll work through the process and see what we can find for you all right dudes um any vx's or vt's that are running no not at the moment no nah.
No, I think we sold the last one the other day that was a good runner. We do have an AU that's really good. Leaf reckons it's the best one he's ever driven. That thing there, it's he's only ever driven once, so it's the best one. How's this um phone thing in it though? Like, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna pull this out and put it in the XR8. Just for um quirky cool factor. This thing will get cleaned up this week. But when you open that up and then you flip that open and you got mad phone holder. Look how cool that is, and that shuts. How cool is that? Fully sick, mate. Fully. Yeah, alright, but anyway. Um, gonna just gonna work through and sell some stuff, guys. I got some trucks. I've got the dual cab tow truck. I'm gonna sell that too. Got to do a rear main on it so it's got no oil leaks then, and then it can go. Um, other than that, it's pretty good. Do some wiring. All right, guys. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in this morning. Sorry, the hovercraft didn't hover, but it did run. It'll just be a um, it'll just be a work in progress, guys. So I'm gonna get some stands from Bunnings today put it on that so we can get underneath and have a look at the fiberglassing and then work out how the skirts work and then we'll be able to go through together well, everyone will know more about hovercrafts than what you ever wanted to know which is you never wanted to know um yeah cool all right dudes uh, i don't know like subscribe if you haven't subscribed subscribe um merch shopkingatowcrew.com uh, there'll be some new merch coming up soon as soon as i get time to go up and design that stuff um, Rally T soon, hovercraft stuff. Uh, g'day NZ Gearheads, how are you? Don't forget to check out um, Maddie's back online with um, Gearheads Oz. Okay, he's out skidding and carrying on, so make sure you check him out. Um, righto, dudes. See you.